style now, based on their base. He stands 5'7", age 18, from Tijuana, Mexico. He's fighting out of in from Jim Benichudo with a record of 2-1. and one. This man's a jiu-jitsu fighter. Welcome, Brandon BB Assassin Moreno! Once again, your referee, Louis Cobian, will now give instruction. Fighters, we went over the rules. Any questions from Blue? Red? Good luck to you guys. Bring it after Chris Gregory vacates the ring. Ron Skolzdang. Red with black flame trim. White with black trim. Brandon Moreno. First round of action. Moreno on a quick double leg. Building, defending, good turn. That's how you turn the corner right there. Wrestlers, we're trying to learn right there. You don't always have to just push them through. You can just turn the corner like that. Hey, big John McCarthy putting his arm and up to hold the ropes there. Guillotine attempt now by Skolzing. He's in a half guard position. That may be not the only thing. Not yeah. likely to get a submission here, but possibly use it for a sweep, something along those lines. Skolzing looks, he looks poised. He looks comfortable. And Moreno happy to kind of wait for his position. Again, with with only three minute rounds, you know, one takedown in position for a little bit of time, and that can win you the round. So Skolzang needs to really start moving if he wants to uh, start impressing the judges. He doesn't have much time to do it. Skolzang with the Muay Thai shorts, and Skolzang also the one who touts a Muay Thai background. Now being forced to work off of his back. We'll see if he has a guard game. Moreno's going to test that. And most of us calling Oyama guys. Oh, armbar attempt here. Yeah, you, you can't come in with Jiva Santana and not have some kind of a familiarity with an armbar. Yeah, I, there's, I don't think there's any doubt that uh, skullzing has been caught in that famous arm flicker armbar by Santana multiple times in practice. Moreno kind of content here, just kind of sitting. Now a, a side choke attempt from bottom, from in the guard by Skullsdang. I can't tell how tight this is, but he gets a minimum here. Definitely, definitely a submittable position here for Skullsdang. Or at least a sweep. He can use this to, to set something up. It doesn't look like Moreno's in too much trouble. And Skolstein doesn't look, has no sense of urgency. He's very calm. That, I think, is a, is a testament to the camps. When you come from a camp that's solid like Team Wyoming, that, that's what happens. I think you're, you're trialed by fire so often. you got a lot of seasoned veterans you can look up to, see what they've done, take advice from them. I mean, there's no handbook to being a successful mixed, mixed martial arts fighter. It's funny how some of the biggest lessons fighters learn are just things they heard from uh, from veterans in the locker room after practice. Our first round scheduled for three. 134-pound contest. Finally, a little aggression here from Moreno. Skolzing up to his knees, going for a switch here. And a front flip by Moreno on Skolzing. North-south position for Moreno. Ten seconds left in the opening round, and we have ourselves a very entertaining ground battle. Moreno able to hold position on Skolzing, taking advantage of that takedown. He's able to stay on top of Skulls, Dink, so he hadn't any real submission trouble and kind of coasted through round number one. That should be 10-9 Moreno. Yeah, as close as it was and as, and as, as well as Skulls, Dink did. Yeah, Skulls did a great job avoiding any damage, and he, and he had a couple submission attempts, but you know, I'd like to see more aggression out of Moreno, a little bit more urgency off the back of Skulls, Dink. Unless you're Shinya Aoki, very few judges are going to give you a, a, a round, a, score you a round from your back. Yeah, it, it takes, I would take, uh, more than average active guard to appear to be 
to the judges at least, who appear to be in control more so than not. That is why on, on the amateur level that they're, they're instituting the half point system and they're trying to get attempted sweeps. Yeah, an experimental experimental system here at Camo, California Amateur Mixed Martial Arts. Try to give credit for those for those subtleties and nuances of, of especially in jujitsu where normally it's just a takedown and then, you know, top position they just give that the dominant and it's not always the case. Whoa, left hand lands immediately off of the leg kick by Moreno. Skulls with some ground and pound. Moreno back up. Overhand Big right. Overhand lands. right. Moreno with a, an air of confidence that almost exceeds the level of achievement in this fight so far, but he is very confident. You gotta have a swagger, right? If you're gonna be a fighter, you gotta have a swagger. You gotta walk in like you own the place. RJ Clifford with color commentary and hip hop lyrics. Rare to see that combination at the table. Right? No, don't count on it too often. Second round of action. Moreno pushing the pace a little bit, and it looks like Skoltang, as, as well as he did on, on the ground, he didn't get submitted, obviously. He looks like he, he was trying to stay on his feet now. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's, there's no question here that Moreno wants to fight on the ground, and Skoltang wants to standing up. For the record, Moreno, 18 years of age. You can tell he's young. His man strength hasn't quite come in yet. He does look young, but he's, he's very good. At 18. Skolzding is winding up that uppercut all the way from like his butt cheeks all the way up to the head of Moreno. Skolzding, the older of the two, at 26. Really attacked by Moreno. Oh. Unsuccessful. Looking for an uppercut. Skolzding backs up. Wants Moreno back up. Moreno was bringing a crab trap there. And he gets Skolzang to the ground. He's going to have to earn it. Skolzang is just loading up that left hand. Yeah, look at it. For uppercuts. And straight lefts. There it is. Oh! oh he dizzy right 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 there. Skolzang goes in for the kill. He was waiting for that moment. Now Skolzang is going to look to take Moreno out of this before the time clock gives him another round. Moreno hanging on to save himself. Skolzing now on top, side mount. His corner is screaming, mount, mount, get into a better position. Well, I mean, there's a good chance he can pound him out if he can get into the mount. Moreno just holding on to a low single and eating lefts for his work. Back into a double leg. Skolzang is coming alive this round. Should be a takedown. He's got those legs wrapped up. Skolzing not going down easily, building back up. This is, where, this is where the difference between a cage and a ring comes in. You yeah. don't have a, a hard surface to crawl back up. The corner of the ring helps a lot more, though. Less than 10 seconds as the second round comes to an end, and Moreno coming back to life. Skolzing found his stroke, though. A lot of good damaging shots. You can see it on the face of Moreno. If we get a close-up of his face, that right eye is starting to swell. You can see the redness from where those punches landed. Yeah, Very yeah, good round wow. for Skolzing. He's starting to look like one of the episodes, uh, one of the, the Rocky films. <laughs> That eye, is, he got a lot of damage in that round. But that is one tough kid. He was starting to come on at the end of the round again. He was showing some good survival, too. When he was rocked, he grabbed onto Skolzdang's arm, tried to keep the damage as low as possible, stayed on all fours. When you're down on all fours and your hands and knees, you know, opponents can't kick you, they can't knee you in the head. Uh, it's a lot harder to get strikes in because back of the head is illegal. It's one of those weird positions in mixed martial arts where I wish there would be knees to the ground of, of a grounded opponent, knees to the head of a grounded opponent, so you don't kind of have these safe zones where fighters can kind of hide in. You have, you know, if you open up more offense for the attacking fighter, it makes the fights a lot more exciting. But you take advantage of the rules you have, and Moreno did survive that second round. Right, that is what the clinch in boxing is, too. They tie up, becomes like a hug, and then nothing happens. Third and final round, and that eye is absolutely swelling up. And targeting it immediately is Skolzang. Skolzang eats the shot. by Moreno. Why do I get the feeling that Jiu-Jitsu is out of the question in this round? <laughs> I think Moreno wants, to, Moreno wants to use it, but he doesn't know how to get it down. He's throwing some good strikes of his own right now. Well, then calm, though. He's kind of waiting for a wild shot so we can fire that straight left or that uppercut. 
And that left hand might even be easier to get to the target now if that vision's at all impaired on that side. The right eye of Moreno. Moreno in the white. Skullsdang in the black trimmed red shorts. And he's really starting to do some work on that head. Another uppercut by Skullsdang. Whoa! Big left hook by Skullsdang. Body shot. Body shot rocks Moreno. Wobbles him a little bit. Scrabble. See Moreno diving for those legs. Goals dang wise to it. Mouthpiece out. Good job by the referee. That was a clean break in the action. The way Moreno's holding that mouthpiece in his mouth, though, it's bound to happen. Mouth wide open, kind of letting that mouthpiece be loose in his mouth. He's breathing a little bit heavy. That's what's, that's what's going to happen. If it happens more times, the referee can start taking points away. See right there, Moreno landed a shot on, on Skullsdang's chin, but he was kind of pushing his shot. He may have been able to do some damage if he had actually launched it. Moreno's the one pushing forward here. Skullsdang's kind of patiently waiting to land his strike. Yeah, if he sits back and admires his work on that eye too long, the round's going to end. Right to the body by Moreno. He still has to take this fight to Moreno because Moreno's a tough kid. He's not backing away. Well, Moreno's being the aggressor, but he's not landing as, landing as many strikes as uh, Skullsdang. And Moreno just, a lot of times judges can see how you just kind of look kind of flustered. Moreno just spit out a huge spit of blood on the floor after that hammer strike by uh, by Skulls Dang. Well, again, that, that is why the terminology in the fight game is called effective aggressiveness. Moreno is going forward a lot, but he's not doing as much. He's he just, just simply he just going forward. Another left hand last by Skulls Dang. Whoa, he is. Whoa. All the big left big hand left on hand. the ground. Ground to pound here from Skulls Dang. Skulls Dang doing what the meat industry calls tenderizing. Skullsdang not overly aggressive. There's no, no, uh, no hurry to dive in the garden. Right hook lands. Wow, right hand, left hand combination by Skullsdang. And Moreno's still shooting in for something. This is the third and final round. Both guys fighting like they need the round. Moreno just looks to be the more exhausted. Skullsdang just fighting to hang on. I mean, he's shooting desperate shots, holding on to the glove. Goes in complete control, lands a little ground and pounce. See what we can do here in the last few seconds. And that's it. Great round for the Bantamweights. Great round for Skullsdang. And a bow right there, folks. Watching this thing right now on SureDog.com. That is the reason why anybody who tells you that this sport is brutal or something wrong with it shouldn't be talking. More honor and respect in this sport than you'll see almost anywhere else. Few people realize how difficult it is to be a mixed martial artist when it comes to how hard they train. The weight cutting weeks up. And here's a display of the cardio of Skulls. I mean, real measured approach. I mean, you don't see this kind of, uh, not to overstate the approach here by Skulls Dang, but he didn't get overly aggressive. You know, he was only a, has one fight as a professional. Very calm in his approach. He knew he had Moreno hurt. Maybe a little bit more aggression, trying to put him away, but he knew that Moreno wanted to fight on the ground. Wanted to lure Skulls Dang into his guard. Skulls Dang was, was happy and content to keep his own pace. There was an air of, of cockiness and confidence from Moreno in the first round that seemed to dissipate in the second. And then Skullsdang, I think, just took that and ran with it going into the third. But make no mistake about it, Moreno, at 18 years of age, you see it with that eye, that kid's tough. That is something anybody in the fight game for any amount of time knows. You can't teach that kind of heart. Nope. That kid's just tough. Yeah, he, he hung on there. And you know what? He, he knew how to survive, too. The official decision coming up in just a moment with ring announcer and the thunderous voice of Chris Gregory. You're watching Pandemonium 6. We're in Riverside at the Riverside Convention Center here in Southern California. A full night of combat sports. And here is, once again, the very classy, very thunderous voice, Chris Gregory. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight goes the distance. All three judges score this bout. 29, 28, in favor for the winner by unanimous decision. In the blue corner, Ron Skolstead. Skolstead.
And also a round of applause, please, for the challenger, great fight, Brandon Moreno. Great heart.